Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with two more One Sheet Wonder templates for 6x6 pieces of paper. One Sheet Wonder is just that you can create um, a bunch of cards, in this case just two, so I guess not a bunch, but you can create cards with your paper and cutting it exactly and there's no scraps left. It's my understanding. I didn't come up with the idea, but I think that's a term people are familiar with, so that's why I'm using it. I am going to be using the Sleek Stripes paper from Sunny Studio, and I'm going to be using some products from Lawn Fawn and Sizzix to finish off the cards, but I will first talk about the measurements and the way that I'm cutting them, because I know that that's what most people are probably interested in, in finding out, and they want to use up their own 6x6 paper. So I think this works really well with double-sided paper, because then you can use the other side as a way of like mixing up what you're sharing on the card you know like the the f you'll see as it, it kind of goes but like I have two different stripes on the sides of the paper all right so there's going to be a blog post that tells you how to cut all of the paper I'll link that in the video but basically I cut my first paper in half so it's three by six inches then I cut off two and one quarter inches so that it was two and one quarter by three then I took the remaining piece, which was three by three and three quarters, and I cut that at one and a half. So I basically cut that piece in half in the sort of lengthwise direction. If that's unclear, go to the blog, see the template, save the template. I am creating a little page on my blog where I'm putting all the one sheet wonder templates and some printables so you can print off the templates and I'm going to put them in like PDF form and etc. If it's if some of the stuff isn't up yet, it is to come, but it should all be up when the video goes out. So the second piece I cut again to three by six, I cut it in half. Then I cut a three by one and a half, another three by one and a half, a three by one and a three by two. I'm going to mat all of these pieces on black cardstock. That was another thing about the Sunny Studios Sleek Stripes is they all will go really well with black and white, which is the cardstock I had on hand. I recommend putting mats on them and my sketches are going to show mats. I think that it makes all of the elements a little bit more substantial. I like a quarter inch mat. Some people like smaller mats. I think that you could still use the sketches pretty easily, even if you like smaller mats, but when you look at the measurements on my sketches, it is going to be for a quarter inch bigger, which would leave them one eighth of an inch around all sides. I was a little bit worried when I picked these out that the black and orange was going to look very Halloween, but I think that it works out in the end and, and doesn't look too much like that with everything else that's going on. But the last two cards that I made for One Sheet Wonders were a little bit more of a girl theme in the sense that they had little fairies on them. I know that no colors or animals or whatever, or critters, I guess critters is not the right word for it, like no characters just for boys or just for girls, but I just wanted to mix it up and make something that was maybe a little bit more traditionally girly and then something that was a little more traditional boy. So that's, that's kind of the logic there. That's why I picked the blue and the orange because I knew I wanted to color the Lawn Fawn Dragon and I'd color him green and I thought that the orange and the turquoise would both go well with the green so I could color the dragon the same way for both cards. So here I'm showing you the layout. But again, you can go to the blog and see the sketch. The center panel, so the panel that I'm putting on top of the stripes in the, in the background or the strips, I guess is really maybe a more clear way of saying it. I use the opposite side of the paper. So I'm using the sort of straight stripes in the background and then the diagonal stripes for the focal panel. That's why it can be nice to have double-sided paper, but if you only have single-sided, consider cutting up two sheets of paper and making four cards but mixing the patterns. I know that a lot of people who are interested in this, they, you know, if you have even have just one paper pad you want to use, you're going to have multiple patterns to mix in with it. And I think that by adding different critters, you can customize these cards. So even though you're using the same layout, you could get different looking cards. So I'm going to just go quickly through my Copic coloring. I'm using YG 17, 13, and 11. This is one of my favorite bright green colors. I think it works well for kid cards or any card where you're really going for a bright color palette. 
I find the greens, the G's a little bit more difficult to blend and the Y G's I like a lot better. I'm keeping my shadows really simple. I'm putting them just, I picked that the back of the dragon would have more shadow. And so that's where almost all of my shadow color is all on that left side there. But there are little places where the dragon's um, arms or legs are overlapping. And so that would have a sort of natural cast shadow. I think if you didn't add that, it would still look pretty interesting just with the shadow on the one side. And I'm going to color his wings in a slightly darker green. And I'm going to achieve that by just using the YG 17 and 13 and just skipping the last color. I do like to make my shadow areas quite small and leave most of the space that I am coloring in the lightest color, something I've shared a few times in videos, but it's a very simple way to get a high contrast look. With this dragon, I thought it would be nice if he had a little bit of texture. So I'm going to take my darkest marker, the YG17, and just add some teeny tiny dots in the shadow areas. I do try to vary where they are. I don't want them to be in a straight line or anything. And I try to vary the sizes just slightly with one, with some being super, super small and some being just a little bit bigger. And I kind of control that by how long I hold the marker to the paper. I would recommend maybe giving it a, you know, a couple of seconds or a couple minutes to dry because if the marker on, is still very wet on your card, it could blend in and they would be softer looking. I'm going to add YR07 and 04 to all of the dragons as well as a set of BGs and that's so that I can color all the dragons the same but they'll match both the orange paper and the turquoise paper that I picked out. I kept my blending really simple with just two marker colors for each of these things because what I'm going to be coloring in with them are so small. So I have BG15 and 13 and I'm adding just a little line of my shadow color and then blending it out with my lighter color. I recognized when I was coloring this on camera that there are two horns, but the horn that's in the back of the dragon's head is very similar in size and look to his little spikes. And when I colored all of the rest of the dragons, I managed to not realize that like the I needed to color that other horn orange. So all of my dragons have, except for the first one that I colored on camera, one orange horn and one blue horn, which is not what I meant to do, but I still think it looks really cute and I use them anyway because I don't, I don't know that anybody, not everyone would even recognize that I made that mistake. I'm going to be adding a sentiment. I'm using a Spanish sentiment today, as I've mentioned in a few other videos, because I make my cards to donate, even when I'm making cards for YouTube, you know, for a tutorial, I am thinking about what I'm going to do with these cards. So I, I wanted to, to make them for uh, the Cards for Kids organization and respond to the fact that they are really looking for more cards in Spanish. And I do, as I've mentioned before, have some jokes on my blog that you could use for Spanish cards if you like to donate your cards. Now, I have a Spanish word sentiment from Sizzix. It's no longer available. So I'm showing you that you can make your own custom sentiment with whatever alphabet dies you have, since it is harder to get sentiments in languages other than English from what I can tell. It may just be in America, it's hard to get them. So anyway, just kind of showing you two options. When you are using alphabets to make your custom sentiment, I do recommend taping them together. But consider that you're going to need to poke out the letters. They'll probably get stuck in the dies. It's pretty normal. The same thing happens when you cut out a word sentiment. So if you're going to tape your letters together, consider not putting the tape over the little holes that you'll need to poke. Or in this case, I, my tool that I'm poking out with is kind of sharp. Of course, be careful if you're using something like that. But you could poke through the tape. Since it's just like a, mine's a simple paper tape. It's frog delicate tape, but you know, any old masking tape pretty much does whatever works well for you. Um, this is just what I've had for years. So I cut out three of each sentiment and layered it together so that it would be nice and thick and a good prominent part of the card. I'm going to use my scripty word on one card and on the other card, I'm going to show you the custom sentiment. And I, again, just glued those three layers of each one together with my Barely Arts glue. It's a really strong adhesive I've been very happy with. 
I'm going to add my dragon who is popped up a little bit by taking two layers of cardstock, gluing them together, and then putting it behind in lieu of foam tape. But of course, you could just use foam tape. I like it because it's easier to mail, it's more environmentally friendly, it's cheap because I don't have to buy it, etc. And so there you can see my, I have an extra blue horn on my dragon, but I don't know that anyone will notice except for now you guys know and I know. <laughs> but it wasn't because I that was one of the last things I colored, so it just wasn't worth it to go back and, and recolor all the critters. I think that the kids will still enjoy my dragons. Well, I hope they will. Anyway, that is it for my cards today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, please subscribe to my channel. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see more of these, if you'd like me to kind of show you how to, like if you, there's some way you'd like to see it a little bit different, I'd love to hear your feedback. I will link you to my blog where you can get these templates as well as my card drive resources page so you can find out more about donating your cards. And I hope that I also leave you links to the products that I used in the video description, just in case you're interested. Although to me, this is kind of like a scrap busting sort of card. Anyway, um, have an awesome day. Thanks for watching. Bye.